All right, man, this is the finished product. And uh, yeah, I finally am able to start putting some salt down. The, the wind's letting up some. I mean, it's, it's still ripping, but it's a heck of a lot better. Now we made a big old mountain here. This poor fella, he just gets the, the drifts in the worst way. Right at the end, Glacier 6. I don't know, it's 11, uh, 15 a.m. Uh, I think we made, you know, exceptional time. We got 5, 6, 7, and 8 Glacier done. Big mountain there. Skid loader stacked it nice and tall. So the drifts, the drifts in here are just unbelievable. I mean, there's there's uh, the snow, you know, that we get, you know. So whatever this, you know, turns out to be, whatever they, whatever they call it, you know, whether it's, uh, you know, nine, ten, eleven inches, but the drifts. I mean, the snow blows in here. And the driveways just fill right up. So, unfortunately, you end up with uh, more like 18, 20 inches, you know, two feet sometimes. Depends on where the house, you know, like how it faces, you know, and the direction of the wind that day. But you can see with the plastic snow shovels, we got up real tight to the... It's key, too, man. You better have an all-plastic shovel with no steel... A cutting edge because you'll be painting garage doors been there done that so you know look at the uh the snow that we had to go through here so you know they complain that the street gets narrow and i understand i get it but listen there's no sidewalk if we don't so you know here's here's a sewer this is a storm drain so you know we're in the curb gutter right here not too shabby did is there like a curb gutter and you know foot of a street missing uh yeah but do you want your walkway i mean you can't have both now we can go curb the curb you know gutter to gutter we can fill the walks but that ain't gonna go over very well so we made sure to put we made sure to put snow where there was no landscape so it's all methodically done you know they did a really good job i'm real proud of my guys real proud of my crew that's people like to drive around and check up on us it's fire hydrants dug out I got to go back and check each and every one because it's easy to it's easy to miss one and all this and, you know I think it's pretty good you know when people complain oh there's a little bit of snow up against the garage door or something I mean I don't know what I, you know, I don't know what to say about that I, I think we came in here and we clobbered a pretty big storm and we got done before noon and Glacier 4, 5, 6, I'm sorry, Glacier 5, 6, 7, and 8 are opened up. 1, 2, 3, and 4, well, <laughs> that's not my problem anymore. But I can tell you this, they're not opened up. And we're done. We're done. I'm going to start putting salt down. Sidewalks are mostly open. Might be a pile, so here's curb gutter you know some snow in the street but there's a sidewalk if we get another big snow we'll be looking for places to put to put piles of snow that's for sure it starts to get harder we're real proud of my group of guys men and women because a couple guys brought in their wives and man that's solid i appreciate it Snow like this, man, the more the merrier. And it is beautiful work. Beautiful work, but, I don't know, 90% of the people be happy and 
there's that 10% you're never going to make happy, man. There's just so much driveway. You know, we got so much concrete, so much driveway. There's no green belts. There's no place to put the snow. I mean, this, we'll call it what it is, you know? All this surface that needs to be clean. It's concrete drive, concrete streets, concrete walks, concrete porches. People are going to complain about piles on their front yard. I don't know what they want me to do with it. When we used to blow it during, you know, we'd blow it down the side of the house with big blowers on skid loaders. We'd plug furnaces. Furnaces would shut right off. So anyway, this is this is as good as it gets. And I mean, we've been fighting, you know, drifts and wind and all kinds of elements. I'm gonna get I'm gonna get salt and get home, get some rest. My name's Robert Sherwood. I've been working at Glaciers for 12 years. It's a big condo community on the golf course. I've had a lot of fun in those 12 years, but I'm getting to that point to where it's time for me to probably hang it up. I wanted to make this documentary for the residents of Glacier, the board members, as well as the property management company. Now, the year prior to me bringing in this tractor, there was another company and I know it was three and four, I believe, four for sure, that brought in a smaller tractor. Everybody was comfortable with the size of the tractor, but there's this right of weight, meaning to move heavy snow, you need something that has some weight to it. There's, you know, the resistance that something extremely heavy gives. So we have a tractor that's somewhere around 5,500 pounds. It's a 70-horse tractor, and it's the bare minimum to do the job right. The tractor that gave tractors kind of a bad name in this complex, they were some 50-horse tractors, and it doesn't get it done. So there's just a quick education on that. I would have preferred to have had a 110, 115-horse tractor, but the weight now is going to be exactly what a full-size pickup truck is, and... The people, because of just their lack of knowledge about this, just they just get so freaked out when they see this equipment and they just think it weighs, you know, something insane, like 20 tons, which nothing could be fur further from the truth. It's very lightweight. Now, I, by design, ordered this tractor without a front-end loader because the front-end loader adds weight to the uh, tractor. All right, so it's got this four rubber tires and this implement is 12 feet wide. And it has, you know, just one of those rubber scraper blades. So you can't hurt the driveway at all. It doesn't scratch or nothing. I love it. This implement is made right here in America. It's actually made in my home state of Michigan, which is pretty cool. So this is stuff that was never available to us. And now we have these, you know, in my world, you know, pretty advanced tractors and some really nice implements. Where before you just had a grading box and then a front end loader which next to a skid loader a tractor with a front end loader in my world is a joke so that's why we're running the skid loader out in the street keeping it in the street and we're using it to stack the snow piles up high vertically so that we can leave a smaller you know footprint with our giant snow stacks there's not very much room in the glaciers anymore there's no more empty lots they've built up they built on every inch of the place and on each one of these lots, it's either concrete or house. They just maximize their their building space. And Washington Township's been pretty good about letting them build darn near property line to property line. So houses are big. We don't have very much room to put snow. And it really is a challenge. But nothing can be further from the truth when people badmouth the tractors due to the poor experience with that 50 horse New Holland that the uh, other contractor had um, a year a two year or two ago. Um, again, I'm running a 70 horse tractor. I feel it's the bare minimum, and I think that should be just mandatory when you hire a contractor to do the glaciers. You know, literally, you can make sure that they're equipped properly by requesting a 70 horse tractor. You know, with a skid loader out in the street for the big snows.
The circle. The big one and the little one. Little one. Okay. So you want to go ahead? I'll take them. Take yeah. Follow him. Oh yeah. Remember, you can't put the bucket on sidewalk or driveway. All right, cool. This is always good to keep reminding everybody. For the tractor to shine and have great success, you have to team it up with either a skid loader or a plow truck out in the street. The last contractor that was in the glaciers with a tractor, they were underpowered with only a 50 horsepower tractor, and they did not give them any kind of support where there was a man in a skid loader or a plow Notice truck. Notice. We have both, by the way. This fire hydrant, clear. We know where they all are. We've been doing it long enough. We should. Glacier 5 no longer has these these available lots for us to put snow in. To be honest with you, five, six, seven, eight, they're all built up. There's one lot in five. So, you know, we stack the snow here, but we don't, you know, push against the uh the street light because actually, you know, those they're more fragile than they appear. Um, you know, we're digging out around all the all the fire hydrants but you can just see the piles i mean you have to put a pile at the top of the driveway what's great about the tractor you know it has that rubber scraper it doesn't hurt nothing so and then the snow blowers clean the walks and blow the snow up here i mean this is uh tuesday morning i believe with all the salt and snow i don't you start losing track of the days. But anyways, it was go time, and you know, we opened things up. I mean, it's still blowing snow. It's 6.30 a.m. now. You know, and I think we went at the right time. I'm pleased with when we dispatched. I mean, the snow is just blowing, you know, something terrible. Obviously, the shovelers, you know, we use plastic shovels up by the garage door. They got it the worst. I mean, we don't scratch the garage doors because our snow shovels don't have the steel band. A lot of them have a steel strip on them to cut the ice. You got to do just 100% plastic snow shovel. So, my shovelers, they're, you know... They're the un unsung heroes of tonight, I can tell you that. So, you know, we got... Now we'll come through here with our plow and we'll put it in, in a, a V formation to, to tidy up. We got, you know, 15 mile an hour winds in the glaciers. I know there's going to be drifts. I just want to get everybody opened up. So... You know, I had to make the executive decision that a pile of snow went here on this gentleman's yard. Of course, we, you know, we keep the walk open. I'm in the part of G5 that we call the finger. It's just a single court. And I had to put that pile on 692. And then hopefully this guy's in Florida and he won't complain, but... It is what it is, man. The snow's got to go somewhere. We don't have any more room in the glaciers. They built it up. And we all know that these lots are 95% house. So there's very little common area, very little real estate to stack snow. All right, so we're in Glacier 5. I'm at the front entrance here. You know, we're opening up everything really nice. 
So I have the tractor, the plow truck, and a skid loader working in unison, okay? And, and the reason why that has to be, and the, the, the ground crew's got to be right on their heels. Because if you just come through with a plow truck, and then your ground crew don't show up for several hours, you know, people will get hung up. So we'll come with the plow, put it in V mode, grab that. I mean, snow's just been blowing. I mean, it's been like a war zone, but I mean, believe it or not, this is this is good. Probably should have did more video of the actual cleanup in here because this was this always drifts real bad. The common area behind to the north of here, there's a big open area. A lot of snow comes from all these common common areas and fills the streets. All right, I'm at the T. <laughs> we have a name for everything in the glacier. So I'm at the T. Again, nowhere to put snow, so we put it here. The sidewalk is passable for the most part, but I'm just going to tell you, you're going to probably get a call on sidewalks. There's nothing we can do. We'll be back. We'll clean that up a little more, that fire, fire plug. We haven't been through on cleanup yet, but I, I just decided to start doing some video because, you know, we'll, we'll come in here and grab this. Super easy touch up. We start here, so we always got to come through it again because we start so early. I always like to start a couple hours before the storm comes to a stop because if you wait till the last snowflake, you're going to be in trouble in the glacier. You don't want to be put behind the eight ball like that. That's no good. So we got a heavy band that just showed up on the radar. It wasn't there. It wasn't there a couple hours ago. That's all I got to say. We got a lot of blowing snow. We got about 15 mile an hour winds. So we're going to be battling that. So, you know, we, we've been stacking the snow with the skid loader in the street. Because the trucks can't stack like that, and the tractors sure can't. You know, the people have been really good. We haven't had no cars in the street, thank God. You know, just a couple in the driveway, which that's fine. We'll take them in the driveway. You know, fire hydrant there is easy, accessible. So this is pretty good because what we did is we put most of the snow. And that's a pretty good sized pile right there. You know, again, it's really hard to keep these sidewalks open. I mean, we don't have no more open lots in Glacier. At least I don't think so. You guys will figure out a way to build more shit somewhere. All right, so this is a really monster pile. It's huge. But we did, you know, keep it off the walk. Super hard to do. I can't promise it. You know, we blew the snow with the blowers in here. You can see it all humped up. You know, real happy with the crew. These courts are a nightmare got big wide driveways we got all this surface area that's got to be clean and we got such a small area to put the snow so we stacked it nice and high with the skitter you know if we get that snow they're talking about thursday night into friday <sighs> i guess i'm preparing for that i have to so i'm setting myself up i need to do this right so there's somewhere to still put snow when that happens. Because I've been in Glacier when times are good. And this year, with all the amateurs that are in Glacier, I can honestly say that I'm the only one that knows what it looks like when it's like this. And I'm pretty sure those guys are going to have their hands full. So... Now we're going to go down to the dog bone. I call it the dog bone. It's like a double court. I don't know. Contractors, that's, we like speak our own language, I guess. And again, you know, a lot of snow has been blowing in here. Like, I think, this is great. I mean, if you only knew. Again, I, there was, it was so chaotic in here trying to get this mess clean that I couldn't get any video or I'd be in people's way. So, you know, we piled here because it's a sidewalk to nowhere. This is the last lot. This is the last lot. 
at five, six, seven, and eight. This is the last lot. So what we did, we took all the snow from this court and we dumped it down here by the by the river, you know, because this is a walkout. And I'm pretty sure they're going to start digging when the frost leaves the ground because there's marker stakes here. So I don't know what we're going to do when that happens because well, we can't carry this stuff out in our pockets. And Glacier's not ready to start paying us to haul out snow. That's big bucks. So, you know, we pushed it up here. This guy, this guy has a plow truck, so make a note of this. And he backblades his own driveway. And it's this beautiful exposed aggregate, but it's all scratched up because he uses a steel plow. I just want to be on record that this dude... He goes out and he's got his own plow route and he always back drags his driveway and this is it is all screwed up this year i don't want that i don't want no fingers pointing to me so you know we kept the snow off the lights again you have to or you break them sadly we learn all this from what from experience yeah not in glacier but we've we've seen broken lamps on our watch and i haven't had to pay for one in glacier and don't plan on it so this one's pretty cool we actually came in here with the skid loader and removed a monster pile of snow and we took and dumped it down by the river so we get this fire plug but i mean this was a like this pile of snow went past this car i guess you know it's really hard without you actually seeing it but like i said it's like chaotic being between 20 men and you're asking them to do their job and you're over here trying to make <laughs> a documentary of a snow so this wasn't bad this used to come out like way out to here and so the skid loader ran that and dumped it down by the river this pile here was huge i mean it was as big as a house there's more snow dumped down by the river than you can tell because it drops off so i was really happy because the dog bone the dog bone has a lot of surface area. There's a lot of street there. And there's nowhere to put the snow. Because in quartz, the fronts are like a shaped like a pie. The lots of pie. So you got like 10 feet to put snow, but there's a sidewalk three feet behind that. So, I mean, I'm not going to even try to downplay it, but there's a lot of snow here. Because this drops off, you know, another 10, 11 feet, and it's all full of snow. So, I mean, I, you know, I brought a lot of men in. I brought a lot of iron in. I mean, you know, with the tractor, the plow truck, the skid loader, and an, an army on the ground with snow blowers and shovels. And we're going to get this place, you know, nice and tight. So, again, we always start in Glacier 5. Because, to be honest with you, I hate it. The dog bone. I love it and I hate it. The dog bone is... Always a challenge, and uh, but we always have to do it twice on a snow like this because wherever you start, you got to go back over it again. And then we go to seven. Right now, the tractor skid loader are in seven. The plow truck's done in seven. The plow truck went to glacier six. The men are in seven, so. Uh, they'll probably be done in about another 30 minutes and seven with all the driveways and sidewalks and porches. And then, uh, you know, the plow truck's not too far ahead of the crew. See, that's the key. Because these, these people, they drive these Cadillacs and they don't go. You can't back out of your driveway when a plow truck made a big snow row. That's, that's always been a problem. So... When you get a call about how they couldn't walk on their sidewalk, look at that. Look at, look at how that measures to the height of my pickup. So we, we got to come in and tighten this up. I know that. But there was a lot of work to get it to where it's at. And we did that. Look at that. Look at that. 639, man. So 30 minutes, 7 will be done. Now 7 will be pretty polished you know we'll go in there with a a v plow 
and put it in V mode and just kind of clean what the wind does and stuff. And, you know, somebody's going to complain over a four inch, you know, snow row <laughs> on a snow like this. I mean, it just never fails, but I don't know. The older I get, the harder it is to deal with them. I lose my patience. I lose my temper. It's not cool. Ah, all right. So eights, eights, pretty tight. I had some video when the tractor was in eight with a skid loader. And the shovelers, you know, they pulled the snow off the garage doors. And then, you know, then the snowblower guys, you know, we get the little rubber beater, rubber paddle. A little Toros seem to be the best. So, you know, like the tractor just pushes some snow here. We're totally on, you know, like there's a boxwood hedge here. We know all this, you know, like I know there's not much left of our markers, by the way. I mean, good luck finding markers, but... We know glacier like the back of our hand. So, I mean, you know, this is just a dusting. This is from the wind. Nothing I can do about that. I mean, this is good. You know, we used to blow snow down in here. What happens is you plug the furnaces, and then the furnaces quit. Then the residents call me. <laughs> and uh, so we don't do that no more. Again, these are all things you got to learn about the glacier. These houses are built close. Houses are built, they're very big. I think most of them got two furnaces. But yeah, under the conditions, this is pretty darn good. All right, so we're going to we're going to take a look at glacier 6 here. I mean, my plow truck is in here oh yeah look at that. that's nice but look at the wind coming off the golf course man oh yeah we're going to be doing a lot of drift control a lot of drift control oh man so we got all this we got all this open area and it's so cold i mean it's it's good that the snow is slight you know not wet and heavy but then you pay for it because then you're getting the drifts. I mean, on a snow like this, I guess I'll take the the light the light snow. The ground crew is getting the worst of it. It's so cold out. So, you know, we're trying to clear these roads so they're they're you know they can get in and out of here. And my crew is literally just you know now they're probably like 20 minutes before they're in here so that's by design you can't leave these big snow rows in people's driveways i mean not everybody drives a four-wheel drive truck believe it or not a lot of these people still drive these cadillacs like, you know i've seen mustangs and some challengers i mean i get it I, man that stuff ain't suited for winter they'll try to go out though with it and they get mad when we leave snow rows. They're going to get stuck somewhere anyway. It, it's almost better if they got stuck in their own driveway. It'd probably save them a lot of headache. But uh, then I get yelled at and have to dig them out. So I'm getting too old for that. So we're just trying to be smart about it. I mean, again... You know, there's nowhere to put this stuff. All the, the Glacier 6 is completely built up now. And you can see that, like, a, one of those Cadillacs ain't driving through that. You know, so ground crew be here quick. The tractor is going to be here even quick, quicker than that. Probably 10 minutes. So the tractor can quickly back drag. You know, that's a 12-foot implement on the back. That's a big, you know, <laughs> that's a, a heck of a scoop of snow that comes out of these driveways when the tractor's working it. So this is looking pretty good. Let me get out of my plow guy's way. Go down this way. Oh, there's a 
vehicle leaving. See, so that's the problem. You got to get that one has all wheel drive. It's a little SUV, so they got out. But that's the problem with these rows of snow. Like, see that car right there? It ain't, it ain't going to drive over these snow rows. Now, the guy running that plow truck, it's not as. He's, he's, uh, he's like me, man. Gray and old. You know, so we pile it up here, pile it up there. Now, you got to remember, we got a tractor coming in here. Look at this. You can't go through that with a snowblower. Come on, man. See, that's, that's what they don't get. Folks need to see what we go through. Because it's real nice to finish your breakfast and your coffee and your morning shower and then take a little drive and criticize what it is we do. So, you know, that SUV, you know, the bottom just literally drug all the snow out in the street. And, you know, that was a four-wheel drive SUV, so it was able to get out. But you can see the snow row. And this is with a guy that has a lot of, you know, skill. I mean, this thing would have been another two feet taller if a you know, guy with less time in a plow truck did it. So the tractor can go up in here, drag this out, push it over there. The skidder will stack it because that's the only, you know, the tractor's the best tool to drag the snow out of the driveways. Skid loader is the best tool to stack the snow. You need all three on a big snow. I've been doing Glacier 12 years. And one of the reasons why I'm making this video Hopefully you can share it with contractors and board members. Educate everybody because my days are about numbered in here and that's the truth. I'm getting to the point to where, you know, it's uh, getting harder, that's all. It's just, it, you gotta know when it's time. All right, so, hey, you did a real good job. Uh, Jim did a great job, you know, streets are, Real nice. So see, we're not too far in front of everybody. The tractor's soon to pull in with the skid loader. I'm not going to go down that way because I don't want to mess Jim up. He's stay out of his way. So we, we work methodically so we're not in one another's way. That's, you know, key. These little circle things are a pain because the wheelbase on a plow truck, and you got to remember a plow sticks out way out in front, so you got your wheelbase plus the length of the plow mount and bracket. <laughs> Tractor will get in there and do a real good job. Oh, that dude's—he's got a car. So there's there's your perfect example, man. I'm gonna go see if that guy needs to to get out. If so, I'll flag the tractor down as soon as he gets in here. I mean, you just do your best, you know. I'm so glad we were able to jump on this. And, and, you know, we had a, I feel, we had some, at least some time. We, we're going to have five and seven done by the time, you know, the nine to fivers are. You know, let me have a word with this person. Uh, are you going to have to get your car out right away? Are you going to? Are you going to drive out right away? You got to get somebody to the hospital? All right, I'll tell you what. Let me go get my guy. We'll, we'll drag all this snow out of here for you, okay? Are you I am. Thank you so much. She needs to be... We're both widows. Okay. Can She's in here? She lives in here too? Yeah, she's like four over. Okay, so you can pick her up at the street then. I'll get you open. And you're driving that car? Okay. You're welcome. Okay, so that's a neighbor driving a neighbor. Her, her, her neighbor friend is having a procedure, and she's got a, to drive her. So this is quite common in the glacier. You know, the thing that worries me always about the glacier and why I put so much salt down, I get criticized for how much salt I put down. But I think like 20% of the community in the glaciers are on blood thinner, you know. I talked to a lot of the older folks and tell you what, you slip and fall and you're on blood thinner and you hit your head, that's that's bad. That's all I got to say. You know, I just think about that all the time in here. 
So that's why I put so much salt down. That's why I, I salt the intersections heavy. I salt the, especially by the mailboxes, I'll just stop and I'll turn my spinner off and I'll keep my auger going and I'll drop a big pile of salt. And they complain that I'm uh, ruining the cement, ruining the roads. But you know what? Who cares? We're saving lives. All right, so this is Glacier 4. We're heading to Glacier 7. So what typically happens in contractor world these guys had to get their businesses going because businesses are going to open soon. I mean, you know, it's almost 7 a.m. here. So, yeah, I mean, they got a gun barrel to their head. I've been there. I mean, this is almost like a semi-retirement gig I got going where I'm just in the glacier. So the folks don't realize these guys can't, they can't make it on just the glacier. They got to have shopping malls and banks and Rite Aids and all that and you know so depending on when it snows now the last time it snowed it was great it was Saturday night so they jumped on Glacier first because the businesses didn't have to be open on Sunday most of them so that was super cool I mean so see that's how it works and and folks got it good they got the mailboxes real nice you know, that's, yeah, everything's looking good in here. We got a lot of strong wind, though. I'm not even going to salt right now because it's not slick. And with the wind blowing like this, you'll make it worse. The salt will, uh, well, it's so cold out that the salt... One, it's, it would take a lot to do anything. And then as you melted the snow, it would refreeze and become an issue. Um, right now, it's best case scenario. Leave it the way it is. Um, when the winds die down, okay, my guy's doing pretty good. So my tractor, my tractor's got about another two, four, six, eight, ten, probably about... 11 driveways I'm going to get out of his way because that's what I am I'm in his way in the other one when we're done here I'm going to have you follow me there's a little there's a little old lady that's got to go to the hospital so it's okay it's not an emergency but we, we got to do her driveway first, okay? And when you're done here, follow me. We'll go to her driveway, okay? All right, so this is, you know, the, the skid loader's got to clean this up. So this is what you get. All right, check this out. All right, so that car was there, so this is gonna suck. I mean, you can't tell, you know, I'm pretty, but you know, it's almost to my knee. It'd be nice if we could have got that with the tractor, but so, you know, you're dragging the snow out and then you're pushing it up and you know, now the skid loader is gonna tight, tighten that up a bunch and then the plow truck will be back again with all the snow that's blowing we'll we'll bring this the plow truck in here and we'll put the plow in, in v mode and we always ran a v plow in here because then you don't build up the snow rows when you come in and do touch-ups but they're going to get a little snow row and they'll call and they'll tell you guys how they couldn't get their minivan out because there was a four inch snow row <laughs> it's just the way it is in here all right, so this is this is pretty good. So, you know, we have a, had a combination of things going on in here. So first was a plow truck, then was a tractor, then was the skid loader. So, you know, you end up with a little, just a little couple inches here. I mean, come on, man. Look what we're moving, what we're moving for snow. Look what we're doing. So the plow truck did a really good job here. We got a sidewalk in here, see? These old people, they complain when they can't walk on their sidewalk. 
So the snowblower is going to get that, the tractor drug out. The skid loader knows not to put that bucket on the driveway because it's got a steel edge. We use it in the street. We're stacking snow. So they'll have their walk here, and I know that's really important to them. But I'll tell you what, the snow that's coming, if it really happens, like we get this again on Thursday night into Friday, if we're early Friday in here again doing a snow like this, I'm telling you, they're going to lose that walkway. And they're just going to have to accept it. And luckily, it's late February, so they won't have to wait forever for a thaw. It's looking pretty good. So this is Glacier, man. This is how it looks. <laughs> when you're doing it right. So we got two guys following each other. They're working really hard to push those snowblowers. They're working really, really hard. These snowblowers aren't self-propelled. You know, they will kind of pull themselves in the right uh, snows. But this snow is too much, so you're pushing the whole entire time. You're, you're pushing. So we just drove by a pretty big ground crew. Oh, this looks good. The winds will, the winds are going to mess up our handiwork, but I don't know, this is pretty good. I'm real happy with this. I mean, considering, you know, all the snow that's in here, I'm real pleased. So we got the streets open. They're a little on the narrow side. See where the markers are? But look, if we if we press right to the markers, not only are we going to catch grass, they're not going to have no sidewalk. And, and that's just, that's the reality of it. So, you know, we piled some snow here, we piled some snow here, we piled some snow here. I mean, we, we're carrying the stuff out of here in our pockets. I mean, we're doing all we can. You can't stack it by the electric boxes. <laughs> I know guys that have buried electric boxes and then hit them with a plow. It's not good. A lot of sparks. All right, so this turn is always a handful. You can see we got, when you get down to this turn, you know, the blade of the plow truck just wants to dump the snow on you. There's just nothing you can do. So I'm real happy with what, what's going on here. I mean, this is... Now, if you get up in the morning, you have a, a bowl of Cheerios, a coffee, you know, you take your shower and you get... You come out of your warm shower and your warm house into your warm Cadillac. You start driving around. Yeah, you're going to... You can find fault with anything, I guess. Because you, you weren't here to see exactly what went on. You can't appreciate what went on. What it took to get it like that. Alright, so we're at the far end of... Glacier 6, phase 6. Oh. Yeah, we got some good dust. Now we're going to have to dig this Cadillac out, but the good news is we got the street opened up. We'll take the tractor and we'll get all the snow drug out of here. You know, we got a couple feet of snow in here. Bunch of snow up in there, 18 inches. Go ahead and drag that out with the tractor, and that guy can drive to work in that Cadillac. If that's what he wants to do. All right, kind of a daytime shot. We uh, we're back in Glacier Five doing touch-ups. You know, wherever we start out, you know that's going to be the case. I feel the people that get the the cleanest and the best job are always the ones that. Um, are the last, to be honest with you, the last. Um, but everybody wants to be first, right? So anyways, you know, we started out in here, so we came back, we did all the touch-ups. So got a huge pile of snow here, you know, and so everybody's mad about the piles of snow, and but they want their walkways. So, you know, here's a, here's a walkway for you. I mean, it's... 
this walkway means a lot to the glacier people, and I understand that, and uh, I can respect it. But I think they also have to understand when there's a very narrow green belt here, and there's no way we can plow over the sidewalk, okay? I mean, yes, we could, but it it's risky. Uh, once in a while, we, we do it. In certain cases, we do. Yes, absolutely. And in a couple places, we had to, for sure. But we try for the most part not to. So you're trying to lose the snow that you're plowing from the road in such a tiny green belt here so that you can preserve this walkway. So we have the guys blow the snow this way just to minimize the amount of snow here. I mean, we're doing everything we can. So we had a lot of drifting, you know, so... You know, there was a lot of two-foot drifts. Real real pleased with my group. I'm real happy with the job. I mean, it's a big snowfall. And, you know, the glacier people, they haven't seen a big snowfall in a while. So, you know, a lot of them are having a <laughs> hard time with it. But, okay, so, you know, they lost some road here, and they lost some road here, and that's just the way it is. So I'll tell you what we can do. The board can have a discussion. You lose your sidewalk, and you let us push to the curb gutter your street gets wider and if we can lose the snow down the street and we're not worried about mounding up snow on the walk you know then residents that just happen to be in the spot that i can stuff a pile of snow don't have to put up with a big pile of snow so you know just wanted to you know show everybody what it is that we're battling you know, I know we're we're off the street with the snow. I mean, look, we're we're competent people. We're we're all adults. I mean, yeah, you lose three four feet of street here, but I gotta lose the snow. All this area collects snow. All these driveways and all this roadway, these courts, these big courts. They all got to be cleaned. This is all surface that we remove snow from, and we have such a little footprint that we're trying to tuck this stuff in. There used to be available lots everywhere, and that's no longer the case. The place is all built up. Literally out of Glacier 5, 6, 7, and 8, there's one lot left that I'm aware of, and yeah, after that, it's really going to get ugly. But, you know, this stuff is... I don't know, it's not rocket science to me, but I have been doing it 35 years in all fairness, so I'm making this video. I'll show you what we go through, give you a little bit of an idea, and then you guys go ahead and tell me what you want from me. I think 90% of the residents are happy and 10% are just miserable in general. <laughs>